Hi, I'm Michelangelo Badio, and this is another installment of No Boundary, sponsored by Sawtooth Guitars, Chromacast Music Products, and Go DPS Music. Um, we have a really incredible app. And so one of the, the things that you can see after these live streams is that we have a lot of content on this app and you're going to see a lot more about promoting it. Um, it's free to join, you know, and free means free. It's not like free for 30 days. You can join it. You can get discounts on gear and uh, 20% off on things when you buy it, when you purchase through the app. But there's so much content already on there and we're really going to ramp it up uh, for this year as far as uh, playing and uh you know, doing new things uh, online for this. Okay, everything good, Adam? Okay, great. Now, I'm playing uh, what is called, it's the 24 fret FRX. Now, this is a really unique guitar from Sawtooth. I mean, it's more of a traditional shape, but I love this, this, you know, cream colored whitish. It's got really beautiful binding on it. This FRX Floyd Rose, it's pretty amazing, but Sawtooth did something that no other company, not even Floyd Rose did. What they did is they added the locking uh, tuners here. So in other words, the nut locks. And we found that this makes the FRX a lot more stable because one of the biggest differences, if you're a Floyd Rose user versus a regular Floyd in this, is that there are so many different ways to adjust it. It's very nuanced. And that's still, it means that you can still do a lot like I mean, it still works beautifully and stays in tune, but it's not something where you can go, wow, you know, so extreme on it. It's really not meant for that. It's almost meant like a not like to be used as a non-locking tremolo where you so it's a really beautiful trim but the thing is it's very stable especially the way sawtooth did the modification uh it's a really stable tremolo it's got a great sound and it looks bad, it looks cool. I, I love the way it looks. And it's got 24 frets of death, mayhem, destruction, doom. Uh, I just love this guitar. I think it's really amazing. Now, uh, before we get into the lesson part, I want to say a few shout outs. Uh, I have my notes here. I want to say hi to Tanya. I want to say hi to Alexis. Uh, let's see, Denny. I see Pedro, uh, Brett, Nick, Roxana, Sasha. Uh, yes, I see Roxana there. Um, there's a lot of people online. And of course, we're multi-streaming, not just on Facebook, but YouTube as well. And so, uh, it, you know, I enjoy doing this. I mean, it's been over two years. And uh, I just uh, recently uh, performed on stage with Dragon Force, you know, my hometown of Chicago. And uh, they played at the Metro. And it was such an amazing concert. And, and one of the things, you know, I've said this before in live streams, I actually find it many times much easier to talk and deal with people who are on that level versus sometimes opening acts that think it's okay to set up their gear before the headliner. And like, whoa, dude, where were you? You know, I, I actually had an opening act tell me. Uh, we, we walk in, I got my tech, even my agent was there. Other gear was set up before the headliner, which I was headlining. And uh, I go, uh, he, this guy sets up like, where I normally set my stuff up. Now I don't. I have a uh, you know a guitar tech, so you know I'm not a diva, but I don't set up my own gear. And so, and the guy looks at me. He goes, "Oh, that's okay. You can set up around me." I'm like, oh, "Really? <laughs> you think so?" <laughs> so then I made my tech, and he was great. You know, he's like, "Move your stuff." And uh, the the band got mad 
and they canceled. So they wouldn't play because I was a diva because I was the headliner and the opening act set all their gear up where we set up. Joey was like, I'm going to annihilate them. I'm going to show them who's boss. I'm the star of the show. But, you know, I didn't get so mad. I was just like, I would never do that. I mean, I've worked with George Lynch a bunch of times. I've opened up for him. We're friends. You know, he played on one of my albums. You know, we've hung out together like on the Monsters of Rock Cruise. I would never, ever in my wildest dreams have my tech set up gear before George. It's his show, just like when it's my show. And and uh, with this Dragon Force show, I mean, Herman Lee is just amazing. He's not only a great guitar player, but he knows everybody. He's the networking king. Uh, you know, backstage, and then Gus G uh, was uh, one of the bands. You know, his, his band Firewind was on the bill. I'm really good friends with Gus. And then uh, even uh, before them was a band called Seven Spires, which Jack Costo, I've, you know, he's in his 20s. I've known him since he was a teenager and watched him grow up. And it was just so much fun backstage playing and and, and I can't stress it enough. You know, I, I had a great time. You know, they treated you really good. And, and it, it's just a good vibe. And, you know, even when I was in Nitro, I have to give a lot of credit uh, to Jim Gillette. There, there's an interview out uh, from Max Carlisle, Guitar Max, on YouTube, where he talks about the Rocket guitar. He was a really big fan of that guitar. And Jim Gillette was very much responsible for helping me design that guitar. So when you think the rocket, I you know, I give credit where credit's due. And Jim, you know, he did the initial drawing. Wayne Charvel built the guitar. Uh, and, and so, you know, when Max found out about that and, and the interview's out, but it was a really great interview because one of the things, you know, even with somebody like Jim Gillette, who's a walking death machine, uh, you know, the guy was, you know, he's a black belt in multiple forms of, of jujitsu and martial arts. But he was really cool, and we always had fun backstage. We never got into arguments. You know, there was, well, plus, if you got into an argument with him, he'd kill you. But, uh, you know, it, he was just really cool. And, and it, you know, it's just like Dragon Force and, and you know, Gus G. You know, Gus G played with Ozzy. What does he have to prove? You know, but everybody's so cool backstage, and I really enjoy that vibe. Um, and, uh, you know, I like working with people like that, too, which is why I love working with the people from Sawtooth. But now listen to a little bit of this guitar. Now remember, earlier I did the Wang Bar of Doom. It's still in perfect tune. And it's got that thick... Um, you know, we're looking right here at this. For, it's got a mahogany body, a mahogany neck, Grover tuners, and there's actually a maple top under all this. And, you know, it's a neck through, so it's not bolt on. This is a really sturdy instrument, and it's got that thick, you know, just killer sound. <laughs> Just a beautiful sound. And the clean sound. a great clean sound. You know, it's that thick humbucker sound. But... And what I'm using is the Sawtooth 40 Watt Tube Amp, which I always use. Uh, it's got two channels, uh, you know, very beautiful clean channel, which you hear now, on uh, the overdrive channel, and I have delay running through both. And I use compression. that middle position. Just sounds great. Then you switch to overdrive. Thank you. 
Just a great, great sounding guitar. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about today is speed gills. Now, see, I have not let Joey talk for a while, so Joey wants to talk. Joey's been dying to talk about speed kills. Now, the reason this came up, one, you know, obviously it's a very, uh, you know, well-known instructional program, and it's still available through Metal Method. But the other thing is in the Chicago area, when you're driving on the interstate, they have these like signs going across the interstate and they've been flashing speed kills. And so I'm like, whoa, dude, you're right, bro. But I'm still alive, dude. And I'm like speeding like crazy, bro. And so I, I was looking at the sign going speed kills. And I also know, you know, we posted, you know, over the years, different segments of my instructional uh, program, speed kills. And every once in a while, I don't know why. I, I guess it's the law of averages. Not everybody can like what you do. But these I get these people who just don't get that it's an instructional program. It's like what I'm not writing Mozart's Hafner Symphony on here. I'm excuse me. That is a composition, a piece of music. That's like my song Peace. I'm not going. Writing a composition like that. What I'm trying to do is show an exercise. And I want to explain my methodology of this. Speed kills, it doesn't matter what genre of music that you like. If you're. If you don't like jazz, like I'm a jazz elitist, yes. My name is Thorsten. And now uh, I'm from Germany, but I'm also American, and my parents were from Germany, but I'm American, but I'm Thorsten. Now, you can also say Thurston Hall III, which is where I got the idea from, from Gilligan's Island. Oh, love it. But, you know, I always think of the elitists that, oh, yes, we're better than you. Why? Because we think we are. That's, we're just better than you. And so when I read some of this stuff, I think, you guys are crazy. Exercises... When I studied music, orchestral music, my degree, they separated us. And I've talked about this before, but see, Speed Kills, it's going to work 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. You know why? Because I studied what worked from the past. I am I'm a student of history. I love history. I, I love all forms of it. Um, I just stayed. I was working in, uh, I can't really say, it was for a, a, a really uh, huge client, and I'm under a non-disclosure agreement, but um, it was a gigantic company. I was staying in a hotel that was built in the United States on the East Coast in the year 1800. And this, they gave me the sweet, I mean, it was just absolutely amazing. This is, and then I flew in to play with Dragon Force. It was a pretty good week last week. And so, but I realized this, that with Speed Kills, when I read criticisms about it, you know, I, I can take criticism. I was a session guitar player. I don't allow people to flame things on my, on my page. And I'm not trying to be negative about this. What I'm trying to say is this is why Speed Kills works so well. Because the methodology was taking, taken from the past. It was taken from, from books that I've showed here, the Cerny School of Velocity, the Hannon, uh, Schmidt Preparatory Exercises for a Piano. But one of the things that they all had in common is, see, technique is a means to an end. You want to have the best technique you can. And see, in this day and age, a lot of the younger guitar players are not necessarily alternate picking, but... They're tapping. And so they use tapping, and this is the thing that I love. Tapping opened up the range of a guitar to play like a violin, but still 
there's one thing that's still super hard to do. Alternate picking. Because think about a violin bow. You're going down, up, down, up. And each bow has a note. That's what happens. So when these when the bow is flying, that is alternate picking. I ended with a little bit of a hammers and pulls, just the very end of it. But it's so fast and it takes both hands. It's like Nyah! And so this is why speed kills works. Because I focus short exercises, alternate picking, short exercises, economy picking. And back when I did speed kills, economy picking wasn't even uh, the name of, of a standard of picking. Uh, it became that way over time, but just something like this, where you have choices. See, the idea with technique is for you to have choices. So if, if I want to play something with alternate picking, I have a choice if I'm good at it. Also, I can say, well, can that riff be played in economy style? Not really, but riffs similar to this, like this. That's economy. Here's alternate picking playing the same riff. Now I'm going to play it in alternate picking fast. Now I'm going to play it with economy. Do you see how much faster economy is? I can play as fast as I can alternate pick. With economy. I can play faster. Now, the goal is not to play faster. The goal is to play what you want. So this is why when when I, I read, you know, when and, and I'm not saying this to try and bring out negativity. What I'm trying to say is that I discount these things. And you should too. Technique is a means to an end. What is the end game? What is the end goal? To play what you want. And one of the things that I've also realized, and it's taken me my entire life to figure this one out, because I grew up in the rock generation. Rock musicians and our current uh, crop of guitar players and internet musical pundits haven't figured something out that people have known for centuries. It was a given. See, the norm was that a great musician could play fast and play music. It's only now, only now that, you know, and I used the name David Gilmour. David Gilmour, bro, he would like more feeling. I doubt if David Gilmore even knows people use his name so much to show feeling. And personally, I don't think he even cares. It's like, well, I got about $500 million, so what do I care? You know, I can picture him playing time. You know, taking away the moments that add up my royalties. I've made millions on songs that I wrote 40 years ago. You know, he doesn't care. Why should he care? All he has to do is play comfortably numb. Well, what if I was comfortably numb? Let me show you some really cool riff. I'm like feeling the vibe, bro. I don't want to play fast, dude. Fast sucks, speed sucks. I've just smoked a couple bowls of really good indica, bro. I'm feeling the love of the riff. I just came up with a synthetic mode. I call it the post-COVID mode. And why? Because I'm ready to party! I like it. I like it. It kind of sounds, sounds like Vi's new record, man. It's like... I'm feeling comfortably numb, bro. It's like, I dig it, man. I finally have experienced the love, the, the, the feeling of David Gilmore. Now, would you want me to teach you stuff like that? Is that how you want as a teacher? 
or just to say, okay, here's an exercise. Do it or do not. Do it to you satisfy whatever it is. I can do this all day because I can't remember. See, it's an exercise. I'm not trying to write a song. But this is why Speed Kills is so amazing. Because I used my piano studies as a basis for, like, how did they do it? And and one of the things, and I am living proof. You know, when, when I was talking to all the people at Dragon Force, you know, they had a lot, you know, some really big time internet influencers there and, you know, some really great young guitar players. And I love guitar. I'm a student of guitar. My philosophy is always a student. I'm always a student. I've never thought I was so good that I can't learn something new. But one of the things that I do, and I, you know, I am like, an example. I don't want to be a role model. I've never professed to be a role model, but I am a living example of someone who's played guitar at a major league level their entire adult life, and I'm still ripping, baby. I'm still tearing it up. Um, when I play over and under the neck versus other people, Herman Lee saw it. Herman and I are really good friends. Herman was playing over the neck. It's on my pages. Then we didn't speed up the camera. Did you see how fast I can still play? My arms move super fast. And it's because I paid attention to the details that I outlined in Speed Kills. See, anybody can say, oh, yeah, dude, you don't want to play them outdated exercises, bro. Well, that's like a pianist, you know, which is the technical name for our pianos. That's like a pianist saying, well, you know, the Hannon, you know, or Schmidt preparatory exercises, well, they're over 100 years old, so they suck. Well, Try playing Rachmaninoff and see how good you are. How about Paganini? Why is Paganini still hard to play? Boy, I wonder why. Because it was awesome then, and it's awesome now. And that's, they had lesson books for this. They had methodologies to train people. Paganini, and I've said this before, if he walked right here and played in front of you, he would blow your mind because the level of musicianship from centuries ago was so high, you know, and, and that's, it was just so incredibly high. You're not going to get better than what Mozart and Bach can do, but what you can do is now in our generation in the 21st century, we're creating new music with new techniques that's equally as good. See, because you know, there, there's two part, there's two components of this. And I was a big fan of the technique ever since I was a little kid. You know, I always used to wonder, you know, why, why did Jimmy Page, you know, play like this, you know, like a... And I'm tuning a concert pitch. Why did players, you know... Play like that. And then the generation before it, they were... You know, I almost thought that the generation before rock were actually better guitar players, not not more innovative. You cannot say anything about Jimi Hendrix. He had something to say, and he had a guitar to say. He made a guitar talk. It's pretty hard to do when he when he played Voodoo Child, and I hear. Or you listen to Machine Gun, uh, you know, the uh, Hendrix, uh, I don't remember, Live at the Fillmore, I think it was. It was amazing. It was absolutely incredible. So he's one of my favorite guitar players. But the technical skill level before rock was super high on guitar. So this is, and so here's what I always thought. You have classical music, classical musicianship. You have jazz music jazz musicianship so you have songs that are amazing and the musicianship is there so all throughout our really our entire history you always had great music and the musicians that played it were equal to the level of the music well here's what happened in my opinion during rock and i think i'm correct you you can't write a better rock song than acdc 
you can't write, it's hard to write better rock tunes than Hendrix. I mean, we were just jamming, you know, here I'm playing with this amazing project and we're jamming to Little Wing. Okay, an 11.1, 13.1, uh, you know, it's called Immersive Sound, which is the new uh, precedent. You're going to be hearing uh, uh, CD, not CDs, but music in the earbuds where, where it, they'll be patented like an 8 or 9.1 surround and Apple's using it. It's going to be, you're going to hear things in 360 degrees. That's what I'm recording with right now. But we're still playing Hendrix songs. But what I really feel is this. The music of the 60s, and it started, was so high of a level. But the musicianship, I didn't feel was technically, not musically, technically what generations before had done. And so my goal was to bring the level of technique up to the level of the writing. You're not going to write better songs than the Beatles or Led Zeppelin in a rock genre, but you can be a better technical player and write songs that are, you know, there's a level where, you, how do you compare Eleanor Rigby versus uh, Paganini's Fifth Caprice? It is on, an, on this exalted level that, you know, I, you know, it's just there. It's on this higher plane than most people can, can possibly compose. So once it's there, I don't try to compare. You know, but the Beatles are that good. You know, when you listen to McCartney's uh, songs, he does very asymmetrical uh, patterns. For example, people think of yesterday. Like yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. So he does this, but do you realize that the actual length of, of the verse is only seven measures. So it's an asymmetrical grouping. And, and you know, who notices this stuff? Me, because I got a degree in it. And so, but he does this all the time. When you listen to Celtic music, there's measures of two. There's, there, it doesn't just flow along. Din, 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 din. It's not just river dance. And so, but they use, they use a lot of, little technical cool things within the music. And so my goal in Speed Kills really was about one thing. It's about raising the level of rock guitar as a whole, as a group, as a community of guitar players to equal the writing of rock music. And so you don't need to be John Petrucci or me or Ingve to play ACDC. But in the past... That's what was the norm, not the exception. It's only in our world right now that, that people try to divide the David Gilmores between the, the technically proficient people. And what I'm trying to tell you is that that's not normal throughout history. It is abnormal to do this. But see, people want to just categorize everything nowadays. And this is why Speed Kills works. I didn't listen to the pundits. I didn't listen to people who said this, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Because a lot of times when I hear people talk, um, I can pretty much discern immediately whether they know what they're talking about. When it comes to music, nothing else. And, you know, I don't give you a bunch of word salad and a bunch of... Okay, next week. And so I don't do this. I tell you simply... I'm going to give you the keys to the Lamborghini. I'm going to show you how to play fast. But speed kills will always work because the way I constructed it was the way of centuries of people who were smarter than me constructed their methodologies. And so this is why uh, it's so important because, you know, the Internet's filled, you know, we, you know, who knows what to believe anymore. But what I know is one thing. Their guitars, in my opinion, is the greatest, most innovative instrument that's ever been created. Look at what's possible now compared to 20 years ago. People are tapping, they're using guitars, percussion instruments. But one thing hasn't changed. There's still alternate picking. There's still legato. There's still sweep picking. And there's still economy picking. These techniques are the norm, just like in violin, the techniques of a violin from Paganini's day to today really haven't changed that much. And the technical proficiency of back then to now 
it's it, it was so incredibly high back then that that it's not it's not a smart thing to forget the past it's a smart thing to learn from the past and this is why speed kills works metalmethod.com and it's one of the reasons too for example with sawtooth i'm going to just play a little bit on this band where i'll show you some listen to how good this guitar sounds Yeah, I saw somebody write uh, something about Ingve Malmsteen's album Inspiration. <laughs> I love this one. But it just sounds great. And also we make a seven string too, but for a six string guitar, now watch, I'm gonna do the dive bomb death. I am Iron Man. Perfectly in, I just beat the heck out of this guitar. No mercy, no mercy. And so this FRX rules, but it rules because Sawtooth did a modification that's not on the original. But I mean, listen to that. I'm playing chordal harmony. Four, then five, that's fifth, four, nine, four. And so, and listen to how in tune it is. I just beat the heck out of this guitar. I, I've showed it new. No mercy. I had something really funny happen to me. Uh, I was recording in my studio, which I do so much work here now, and it's incredible. You know, I've done thousands and thousands of shows, 58 countries, 
My heart is not in the touring like it used to be, but that doesn't mean I won't tour in the future. But I like to do really high profile shows and and, you know, I still do a lot of them and, you know, enough to keep me happy. But I was in my studio working and oh, somebody perfect five and four. Exactly. They're perfect intervals. Somebody wrote that. That is very true. One, four, one, five octaves. They are considered perfect intervals because. Like. So the one, four, five, and even. Somebody wrote, my high E keeps fluttering. I don't know what that means, really. Uh, somebody asked what I think of Jackie Vincent. I think Jackie's great. I played on uh, one of his albums, and, uh, you know, he, he's a really great guy. He, you know, he cites me as an influence. I think he's an amazing guitarist. <laughs> But I just love this guitar. This guitar is one of my go-to guitars. But here's what I say. So I'm recording, and Joey's like, Death! Die! Die! Non-metal believers! They are the unbelievers! So I'm ripping away, and I'm smelling this thing. I'm like, dude! And all of a sudden, you know, my inner voice is, dude! What's going on, bro? It like smells like death in here, bro. I'm like, whoa. And I'm sitting there ripping, going. Now, it, my studio has windows in it, but you cannot tell because we've covered them up. So it could be two in the afternoon or two in the morning. I don't care. It looks the same. It could be snowing. There could be pestilence and plagues. I wouldn't know because I'm in my studio working. And so I was working and I'm playing. I'm just ripping away and I'm smelling this thing. It's like, God, it smells like death, dude, death. And so I open up, I go behind the console, uh, you know, because I'm in the video area of my studio. I have the control room area. I go behind, I look in the window. There's a dead freaking animal. And this thing is like big <laughs> and it's dead and decomposed. And I'm like, God, this smells horrific. And, and and so I called a company that's an exterminator, and they go, well, we don't do it, but we have a guy that does. And this guy comes over to my house and was like, it's a damn dirty job, but somebody got to do it. I'm like, you're the guy, bro. And so and now behind my house, there's a big, like, deck and a gazebo, and a human can't crawl under it. So you have a close to, like, eight, seven eight meters of wood all around so the only way to bring this thing it turned out to be a possum and the reason i'm saying this it interrupted the shred i'm like dude the shred smells like death bro death and so i bring this guy down he's like uh you got you're gonna have to help me with this and what happened is this possum this possum is this freaking big it's almost a meter long it's like this it tried, it, it fell in, you know, my, my, the studio's below ground. It was, it's in technically a basement, but it's all finished and beautiful and stuff. But so the window is above. The thing fell into the window well and couldn't get out. So it tried to crawl under a drain. And I'm sitting there like this. It smells like death. Doom. You know, here I'm talking about all the time. I'm like, oh my God. And so this guy comes in and, and he was so funny. He's like, it's a damn dirty job, but somebody got to do it. And so I'm like, you're the perfect dude, bro. What can I do to help? So he's trying to pull this thing out. I'm watching. He's like, ah, and it's a big dude. Finally pulls the thing out. It's just freaking long. He goes, do you have a bag? I'm like, <laughs> a body bag? He goes, no, you got a bag. I'm like, I got a bag. Joey's like, I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to shred him up. And so, you know, the guy's like using all my stuff. i like, well, aren't you supposed to bring your own stuff? You know, so he's asking me to find all this. So when anyway, he has to bring it through my house, my whole house reeks of death, doom, black metal, if you could smell it. And I'm like, this sucks. And so the moral of the story is this. I started thinking about pestilence somebody tried to come into my studio and invade it with pestilence and i thought this name pestilence is like it just kind of hit me funny like areas 
Pestilence. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if there was, I want to name my band Pestilence. So what I do before I actually said that, I went on one of my apps and lo and behold, there's a band called Pestilence. I'm like, this sucks. They ripped me off, but they've been around forever. And I, I'm like, well, I have just experienced Pestilence. It interrupted the shred. It takes a lot to interrupt the shred, but when it smells like death, you got to take a break. And so what I did was I went and listened to this band, and they were bad, <laughs> meaning good. I was like, I like Pestilence. Die. Die, possum scum. Pestilence. And I thought, you know, it's inspiring. Um, and, you know, I'm goofing around with this, but this is my world. I'm so wrapped up in the record. <laughs> But sometimes things interrupt the shred. And when they interrupt the shred, you have to take a break and come back. And, there, and I'm saying this facetiously, but he, the moral of the story is this. I still had to finish the project. I still had to do the work. And I still practice speed kills. Speed kills will not go out of style. You might look at it 40 years from now and say, dude, they didn't even have cell phones back then. But they didn't end Mozart's day either. But the methodology is as sound today as it was when I recorded it. And here's the living proof. Try this. Just go like this. Take your finger and make a right angle and do it on all of them. That's control. Now let's add another thing. Just take your little digit at the very top. I can do it with every finger. I have complete control over my fingers. This isn't something that I was born with that I was like, awesome, bro. This is something because one of the things that will happen is a repetitive motion injury. When you have, when you're doing something the same way day after day, week after week, year after year, you are repeating a motion, repetitive motion. That is what gets injured. Whether you play baseball and you're a pitcher, your rotator cuff's going to go. Or how about drummers? You're constantly doing this, you know, hitting cymbals, putting on a show. What moves more than anything? I mean, you're moving everything, but it's your rotator cuff right here. So many drummers have rotator cuff injuries. So many guitar players have tendon injuries and they slow down when they get older. And one thing I was so cognizant about when I was younger is my technique. For example, you know, I don't tell, I've never told anybody to play like Mikey ever in my life. See, my technique doesn't work like that. I'm not a biased teacher. I don't tell you what to play. Uh, no, I, I take that back. I don't tell you what to listen to. I don't tell you what songs to play, but I tell you this. These are the techniques. Use these techniques the right way, and there is a right way and a wrong way. And, and in guitar, there's a lot of right ways, which I talk about extensively, you know, because you can do a lot of things right um, and one thing wrong, and it's going to screw you up over time. See, I've already stood the test of time. I'm old enough to say, man, I've been a pro for 30 plus years. I've toured the entire planet. I've done, I've done, you know, just put a checklist out there. And I mean, there's not many things I haven't done and, and playing music. And it's not making me cooler, better than you, but this gives me a unique, uh, a unique uh, perception and a unique vision on, like I can say to a, to a 20 year old guitar player, look it. This is what you have to look forward to. Somebody like me who hasn't slowed down, who can, who still feels strong, who plays hard. You can do this your whole life. And I work every day on exercises that I put out in Speed Kills. This is why it's so good. And I'm really trying to help you, but it's self-serving. To help you, it made me better because it helped me understand what I do. So there, there's, it's quid pro quo, or, or it's like win-win. For me to tell you what I do helped me be a better MAB. Now, I can, you know, and I told you that uh, thing about the possum because it was so funny, but it, like, screwed me up. Like, for a couple of days, I couldn't even come down to the studio. I was like, dude, 
I goof around saying death metal. This was truly death metal, bro. It's like there was something dead in my studio, bro. I mean, this was crazy. And but it it did interrupt the shred, but it didn't stop the shred. And and uh, one of the things, if you get anything out of this, it's like with sawtooth guitars. They make great guitars. We are killing right now. You know, somebody, you know, e even, you know, when I was backstage at Dragon Force, people were saying, you know, Sawtooth came out of nowhere. Everybody knows the brand now. And and there's a few reasons for that. One, they have great guitars that's, and great prices, price points, you know, Grover tuners, FRX. But they take the time and the care to make the FRX actually work perfectly by putting this, this, these, this locking nut is not on a Floyd FRX. Sawtooth spent the extra money to make it work for you. This beautiful binding, it's not cheap. I mean, there's three little black lines that go all the way, very meticulously done. This is neck through. This is a beefy guitar. And it sounds amazing, 24 frets of death. And I know death. I just told you about it. So I can say 24 frets of pestilence but just kidding around um this is an awesome instrument just like when we we did the hybrid you know it, it's a funny thing because a lot of times companies will make a guitar to fill a void in their line like they'll say okay well this company's doing this we don't have that so we need to do a guitar like them to steal customers from them we don't look at it that with Sawtooth. We don't even, it, it's not that we don't care. I love other guitar companies. I mean, I love guitar. So, you know, I, I've autographed every single guitar everybody has ever given me to autograph, regardless of the name or brand, because I love guitar. I'm here to, to talk about guitar. But the thing that I love about Sawtooth is we don't really think about other companies when we design guitars. We think about what we like and what we do and what we manufacture. And the manufacturing at Sawtooth is just, these guys are so on top of it. It's just incredible. And that's why I love the guitar so much. And I'm not stuck to one single signature series. We can make very pointy guitars if we want. We, You know, for my career, I've done that my whole career. So a departure from me, for me, is to make a guitar that's not pointy. How perfectly in tune that is. I beat the heck out of this car. <laughs> Proof is right there. You can talk about it all day. Play. Shut up and play. Uh, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you. Um, we're going to be doing new playthroughs. What I'm going to start doing is after this. Uh, each lesson that I do, I'm going to be doing jams and playthroughs. I've got so much music. You know, if you listen to my music on Spotify, you know, I don't really make, nobody makes money on Spotify, but I love the fact that it's out there and I, and my music is out there and, and a lot of people are listening. You can go to my YouTube channel. I'll go to the GoDPS music app. GoDPS is three companies, uh, you know, with Sawtooth, Chromacast, and they have the greatest owners. You know, I, I work with people. I like people. I like you. And, and, you know, I try to help in the best way I can and be as honest as I can. And, and, you know, online, you know, when people write things, I'm not the best at answering things like in the written word. I feel that the emotion of the words doesn't always come out. So, you, you know, that's why you don't see me answering a lot of questions. And because I, I'm, I'm better ver at verbal communication that, you know, I'm not Ernest Hemingway or Mark Twain or, or you know, I'm not going to write War and Peace anytime soon. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not writing Harry Potter novels. And so, but I can articulate what I want to say and impart my knowledge to you this way. But Speed Kills works because it was thought out. Even my first video, the Starlux video, that's available on Metal Method, metalmethod.com, all my instructional programs. There is a method to the madness because I have a good time. I have a great time playing music. I love it. We have fun. But I take the music very seriously, and I am living proof that you can be a young guitar player and you can play at any age and have massive skill levels. You know, because, see, when you get older, just making a fist is hard. Joey can do this. 
It's like it feels strong. See, I have power in my arms. I have power in my wrists and my hands because I worked to maintain that. I try and keep it ergonomic. I try to not move. I, every little nuance that I do on guitar is all dedicated to economizing the motion and making the most out of what I do. When you see the thing with Herman and I, you know, Herman's doing this. I come in and say, boom, watch the picking hand, how concise it is. I'm, a, I'm not moving much. That's trained. That's not a, a given talent. That is a trained that is a trained response to not guitar teachers telling me, from me analyzing what I can do to be the best Mikey that I can be. So anyway, enough of that stuff. Sawtooth rules. It just rules. You will not get a better guitar for the price. You will not. They make fantastic guitars. We have a lot. So, and uh, this FRX really works good. But it works good because Sawtooth made it work good. The, and, and uh, you know, if you have any trepidations about this, you've just heard me dive bomb a whole bunch of times and not sit there looking at my tuner, tuning it up. It sounds great. It's got 24 frets. It's beautifully made. Thick sound. Uh, I can't say enough about it. So uh, next week, we're going to be doing more playthroughs. And from that point on, it's a lot of playing. And I hope I played enough for you today, too, and gave you the world according to Mikey. Thank you. It's Michelangelo Badio. See ya.